Welcome to a tour of the Spring Evening Sky Part 2, covering more constellations that can be seen in the Spring Sky. I am Peter Davis, the director of Lamar Bruno Baguero Planetarium at TAMIU in Laredo, Texas. Astronomy is a perfect hobby to go out and look at the evening and morning sky on a clear night away from the city lights, because there's many delights that can be seen in the sky. And in these times of social distancing, this could be something you can do with your family. And sometimes it, all it takes is a pair of binoculars for aid to be able to see many interesting things. So I want to begin with just a very fast review of some of the things we did in the first part of our spring sky section. And we looked at mainly two constellations in the north. I'm just going to review those really quickly. I'm going to start with this group of stars here. Now thousands of years ago men looked up at the sky and they saw all these stars and what they did is they drew imaginary lines like they might see a triangle in this part of the sky or might see a box in that part of the sky and they connected those stars together with imaginary lines drawn between them to make shapes that reminded them of the things that they saw around them and the things that they saw in their mythology. One of the most famous and most the least recognizable shape that's recognized by people in many different cultures is this constellation that has one, two, three, four stars that form a bowl shape, and one, two, three stars, three stars here that form a handle shape, and that's the constellation of the Big Dipper. Now this was called by the Greeks Ursa Major, and that's because they thought that this constellation looked like a big bear with a big long tail as you can see there. Now that takes a little bit of imagination but we'll just try to use our imagination here. These faint stars here were supposed to be the face of the bowl and his body comes all the way back to these four stars that are on the back of his body and he has a front leg that goes to these very faint stars that you see here and another back leg that goes to these faint stars that you see here. And they had these three stars to mark out that stretched tail. And they tell a legend about he had a wrestling match with the straw man Hercules. And Hercules grabbed his tail and then swung him up in the sky and threw him up in the sky. And because that bear was so big and heavy, he got a stretched out tail is what they say. And many cultures, though it's interesting, many cultures around the world still saw this constellation as a bear, though there's some other ones that saw it. Some cultures in Europe thought it looked like a plow, actually. This was the handle of the plow. Now we can use this constellation to help us find other things, like we can find a really bright star by going around the curve of the Big Dipper's handle. And we say you follow the arc to Arcturus, which is a very bright star in the constellation of Bootes. He's supposed to be the herdsman herding the bear across the sky, but it looks like a big kite. Right now it's on its side there. It has that bright star. But we can use the other two stars at the end of this constellation. We draw a line from the bottom of the bowl to the top of the bowl. Remember, it's upside down at this time of the year. We go five times the distance between them. We come to a very special star, and that star is called the North Star because it's directly above the direction north. And it just happens to be right over the north axis of the Earth. And so during the night, as the sky slowly changes, it goes around in counterclockwise circles around that north star. And the north star is in another constellation, which is called the Little Dipper, which has one, two, three stars in a handle and four stars in a bowl, too. And a lot of people can see this shape and find that shape, but it's hard to find the Little Dipper because if I back out where you can see more of the sky, I get rid of the lines. You notice you can still follow the pointer star, so the North Star, and you see these two stars over here, but the stars in between are very faint. Now, how bright a star is in the sky is measured by magnitude, and magnitude is a scale for the brightest ones are first magnitude, like this is a first magnitude star, Capella, and this one's only a second magnitude star. So it's not the brightest thing in the sky, but it's still important because you can find the direction north. And these two stars are close to second magnitude too, but the four that are in the middle are fourth or fifth magnitude, especially this one right here is fifth magnitude. And that makes it very faint and hard.
hard to see. So you have that constellation of the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. Now I'm going to go around and I'm going to go look in the western part of the sky. There are a whole bunch of really interesting constellations in the western part of the sky here. The brightest thing in the western part of the sky you're going to see, and I have all the labels on it this time, is actually a planet, and it's the planet Venus. Now Venus is very bright on that magnitude scale. It's minus 4.7, which means it's a hundred times brighter than the first magnitude stars that we see here in the sky. And so it's very bright. And that's because it's completely covered with clouds and those clouds reflect a lot of light. And because Venus is very close to the Earth at this time in its orbit, it's very, very bright, almost the brightest it ever gets in, in our sky. So Venus is in a constellation there, and it's starting to move out of that constellation, but it's still in a constellation that's called Taurus. Now Taurus is supposed to be a bull. And what I look for, if I zoom in here, I look for Taurus is, I look for a V-shaped group of stars with a really bright star on one side of the V. And that's supposed to be the face of Taurus, the bull. To get a bull out of here, it takes a lot of imagination. It basically shows you the face of the bull and his horns. His horns come from this bright star all the way up to this star, which is at the tip of his horn. And his horns on the other side, they come all the way up to this star here. And so they imagine that there was half a bull there, actually. And the reason why they see half a bull is the bull is coming up out of the ocean. I'm going to get rid of that tree. That tree is kind of in the way there. So I'm going to take the tree out. On this software. Now, this software that I'm using here is called Stellarium. It's a free software, and you can download it too and look at the sky just the way I am right now. So, this was supposed to be the face of the bull with the horns coming all the way up to there. Now, this bright star is called Aldebaran, and Aldebaran is actually a double star. Now, many of the stars in the sky where you see one star are actually double stars, where there's another star that's unseen unless you have a telescope and it circles around that star and this particular star is actually so bright that it's close it's we still call it a first magnitude star it's supposed to be the gleaming eye of Taurus it's glaring down towards this constellation which we'll look at next now in this constellation there's also an interesting group of stars that are right here right here and if we zoom in on those stars this is called the Pleiades. It's a, just a beautiful object to look at if you have binoculars. It'll show you about 20 bright stars in there. And they have a kind of whitish blue color. But if you take an exposure with a large telescope, they're actually embedded in this nebulous gas. And nebula, nebula is a word in Greek that means gas. And this is a, what's called a reflection nebula. The stars are so hot that they are causing the the light to be reflected off of this gas, and you can see it, but you have to take a long exposure with a pretty big telescope. But it's still an interesting thing to see, even in a pair of binoculars. I'm going to come to another constellation, but before I do that, I want to show one object that's in this constellation that's kind of interesting. It's between the horns. Now, remember, we said this, these are the horns that come up to here, and if you go one third away, between these two stars that mark his horns, there's a very, very faint object in here, right along that line between those two stars. I still got to go in. It's right here. You can see it right here. It's called the Crab Nebula. And this is a very interesting object to see because this object is an object that in 1054, this star blew up. It ran out of fuel and it crushed its core and ripped the star apart in a super strong explosion that we call a supernova. And we know it was in 1054 AD because the Chinese astronomers saw the initial flash and it was so bright that they could see it for two or three days in the daytime. That's how bright it was. And then it was bright for about five months to seven months in, in their nighttime sky before it faded. And you can see it's a very faint little smudge in a little telescope. But that object, which we call the Crab Nebula, 
it is a pretty spectacular object. I'm going to show you a picture of it right here. And it's a picture taken from the Hubble telescope and from an infrared telescope. It's, so it's a composite. And a composite shows the hot part of this. And that's bluish part in here. And these are gas filaments, they call them. And those filaments are being ejected out into space at very high velocities. As a matter of fact, they've measured the velocities that these things are moving at, and they're going more than 1,000 kilometers a second. Now, that's pretty fast. That's about one-tenth of the distance across the Earth in one second. So it's moving really fast. It's very hot here, and the, the core of the star crushed on itself and crushed all the electrons into the nucleuses of all the atoms and formed what's called a neutron star, and it spins 30 times a second in there. And this is a picture taken with the Hubble, a very long exposure with a lot of detail. Now, if you look at it in the sky, you're not going to see that much detail, but it, it's really, this is really a spectacular picture. and shows how it's, and expanded. And it's expanded a lot, even in modern times. In the last 50 years, it's gotten a lot bigger in, in the sky, even as seen in a small telescope. And so that object, if we back out, you find that in Taurus, between the horns of Taurus, it's right there. Now I'm going to come over to probably one constellation that really looks like what it's supposed to be. And it's in the low southwest sky at this time because it's going to go down in about an hour and a half. And this constellation is called Orion. Now Orion was supposed to be a hunter where you look for these three stars in a row that mark the line of his belt. That's supposed to be his belt. And he has two bright stars above and two bright stars below. These are marking his knees and these are marking his shoulders and he's holding up a shield on the end of his arm here and on this side he's holding up a club over his head. That's because he's going to try to give Taurus a headache there because Taurus is charging towards him. And the shoulder of this constellation, as I said, he is supposed to be a hunter and his name is Orion. The, the shoulder star there is called Betelgeuse. Now Betelgeuse is a red supergiant star. So it's one of the biggest stars we know anywhere in this part of our galaxy. And if you place that star where our sun was, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars would be inside of that star, and the surface of the star would be close to the orbit of Jupiter. Now, the orbit of Jupiter is 500 million miles away from the sun, approximately. And so that's the radius of this star. So it's a very big star. Now, it's been in the news lately that this star has dimmed in 2019 by about one and a half magnitudes, which is about three to four times dimmer. And that's quite a bit in one year. But then at the end, right near Christmas time and in the beginning of 2020, it started to brighten back up. But for a while, it was much dimmer than this star down here called Rigel. And we think it, what happened from looking at really detailed pictures of this star is that it ejected part of the atmosphere of the sun out into space. And this has gas and dust that blocks the light coming to us from that star. And so that's why it is dim. Now, for a while, they thought that it actually was kind of supernova because it's a, a red supergiant. And they do supernova at the end of their life. They now don't think that, but that it's just some gas was ejected. Now, that's the shoulder. It's called Betelgeuse. And it's a oranges, almost red colored supergiant. And there's another supergiant here. It's called Rigel, but this one is much hotter. This one's about 11,000 degrees on the surface of it. And it's not quite as big as Betelgeuse. And Betelgeuse is only 3,000 degrees on the surface. Now, if you want to compare it, our sun is about 5,700 degrees on its surface, or 6,000 in round figures. So we have Betelgeuse, the red supergiant, and a white bluish colored Rigel uh, supergiant. Now, I want to look at an object that's in the bottom half of this constellation. And it's kind of almost in a line that goes from the one side of the belt to Rigel and then over a little bit. It's in something that when they saw this, they thought that he had 
under his belt here a sword hanging down, and that's why the belt's not straight across here. It's kind of leaning down on that side because it has this heavy sword. In the middle of that sword, there's actually an object. And this is, object is one of the most interesting things to look at in a telescope because it's easy to find, and it's a big, huge gas cloud of hydrogen. So it's a gas cloud of hydrogen, and we call it the Orion Nebula, or M42, and again, it's in the bottom half of this constellation of Orion. The Hubble Te Space Telescope took a very spectacular picture of this, and this is a composite of 520 pictures taken by the Hubble. And so NASA made a composite showing great detail of this cloud. And this cloud is a stellar nursery where stars are forming out of the, this cloud of gas. And there's four really super bright little stars that are caused the middle of this bowl-shaped group of gas to, to be seen. And the scientists are right now looking very closely at this, this very high power picture and some of the other pictures that the Hubble has taken to see what stars are forming out of this cloud. And so it's a stellar nursery. And where was that? That's in the constellation back out here in the west, pull that west, of Orion the Hunter. If we use the belt, here's Taurus over on this side of my screen, and we go the opposite way, go through the belt, go over here, you're going to come to a very bright star. It's called Sirius. A Sirius happens to be the brightest star seen in either the northern or southern hemisphere. And it's very bright. It's minus 1.5 approximately in, in magnitude. It was, because it's so bright, it was very famous in many cultures. Like in the Egyptian cult, culture, they associated with the god Osiris. And when it would come up low in the east, they knew that the Nile was about to flood, for instance. But this is in a constellation that's supposed to be a hunted dog following a hunter across the sky. Now, if I back out a little bit, how I find it is I look for that bright star, and I look for a T-shape overlapped with an upside-down Y-shape. and That's how I find, and it's called Canis Major. Now, I add one more star, this one here. This is the head of the dog, and the head of the dog, the dog's running this way, but he turns his head towards you because you call him, is how I imagine it looks. So this is his head. The bright star would be in his dog tags or in his nose. And this would be his back come all the way down to this star, Wizen. And this would be a back leg here. The other back leg is kind of hidden behind this one. And he has a front leg here and another front leg there. And so he's running this way across the sky. And I look for that T shape, as I said, overlap with an upside down Y shape. Now Sirius, one of the reasons why it's the brightest star in the sky is it's only 8.6 light years away from us. Now the closest star to us, besides the sun, of course, is the Alpha Centauri system. And Proxima Centauri is the closest to us. And that's about 4 light years away, 4.3 light years. And this is just about twice that distance. So it's pretty close to us, and that's why one of the reasons why it looks very bright. So we're going to back out. We're looking now still in the direction west here, and we're going to look for a constellation above our friend Orion. Orion is right here, and this constellation is called Gemini, and it looks like twin, it's supposed to be twin brothers. It looks like two stick figures, and they're walking along this faint hazy band that goes across the sky. And they have two bright stars that mark the heads of the two brothers, and they're called Castor and Pollux. And you draw along from Castor to this star to this one to these two. That's supposed to be the foot of the one brother, Castor, and he's walking this way. And his the other brother, Pollux, has a row of stars that comes down like this, and it goes over like that down here. And so he has two rows of stars, so I guess he's a little bit heavier. And, but it's supposed to be, if I zoomed in there, and then we bring on the artwork of how they imagine it's supposed to be two twin brothers. Now, what's interesting is this star, Castor, here, is a multiple star system. It's a sextet, which means there's six stars actually here all going around each other. There's one very close to Castor that orbits very in close to, and then there's two other sets of double stars that go around it. And one of them is real far away in faith. 
so they're hard to see even in a big telescope. But Pollux is a double star also, and you can see that it's double in a small telescope you look at. You can see the other star that's very faint going around the other head of the, that marks the other head of the other brother. Now, most of the stars in the sky that you see are multiple star systems. Most of them are double stars. More than 50% of all the stars you see, if we back out, in the sky are double stars. And so that's not that unusual that it's double. Now, we're going to look at one last constellation. And it is seen right over here. And it looks kind of to me like a house shape. It's a five sided figure. Right? This is the basement of the house. And this would be one wall, and that's one wall, and this would be the gently sloping roof. Now, the walls are splayed out a little bit, but that's just the way the shape of it is. And it has one bright star called Capella. Now, this constellation is called Auriga. And Auriga was supposed to be a charioteer. And that's a man that drives a chariot. And this man raced chariots, and he had a mother goat with him with three little baby goats, supposedly. Now, that takes a lot of imagination to see, see all that, so let me get rid of that for a second. This star was called Capella, which meant, in the original language, mother goat. So they call it the mother goat star. And these three little stars here are called the baby goats. So we have the mother goat star with the three little baby goats here. And there's many interesting things to see here, and there's a group of clusters. There are groups of small groups of stars. There and there's three of them, one here, one here, and another one out there. And if you have a, a little telescope, they're pretty interested to see in a telescope in that constellation. And they're called open clusters. And it's in this constellation of Auriga. Now the last thing I just want to mention to you is that if we come around to the east, I go all the way around the other side east. And we allow some time to go by. And so I've got to speed up time. What's going to happen is new stars are going to start to come up here in the east. I go just a little bit faster. And eventually, just a little bit more, we'll go to, we're at 4 o'clock in the morning. Let's go to 5 o'clock in the morning, right? That's 4 and a half, a little bit more, right here. There are three planets, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars in the morning sky. And they're seen in the southeast here. The brightest one is Jupiter. And then the one that looks the most interesting in a telescope, I think, is Saturn. And Saturn is a beautiful object. And a small, even a small telescope will show the rings of it. It's pretty spectacular to see the rings in it. And even a small telescope, it will show those rings. Move it over here so you can see it a little better. If you have a big telescope, it shows a whole lot of detail of that planet, and so it's very spectacular. Well, I thank you for joining us and coming to hear something about as we looked at some of these constellations in the evening sky and then these planets in the morning sky. I encourage you to go out and look for some of these things in the sky and show it to your children and just enjoy the heavens. And I thank you and have a good day and stay safe.